Good afternoon and welcome to today's GovCon 365 Snack Time Snippet. I'm Mark Lahart and joining me is Paul Skirbsky. Today's demo agenda is going to be on Microsoft's Power BI desktop analytics solution here built within GovCon 365. So thanks for joining us and I'll turn it over to Paul. All right, well, thanks, Mark. I appreciate it. And uh, thanks for everybody for joining us. Today, I'm going to give you a little insight into uh, the Power BI solution. Like Mark mentioned, fully integrated back into uh, Dynamics 365 Business Central. So we're logged right into Power BI. And I think you've seen some other snippets that we've shown. Uh, actually, Power BI is embedded inside of Business Central. But I actually show you how you can view and also design uh, your own Power BI reports and dashboards. So um, from my home page, I've got a sample elements of dashboards. I've got some frequent reports that I go to. And one of the ones I'm going to touch on in a little bit is our job report. But I want to start out with uh, a little dashboard that uh, we just built uh, as part of this preview. So you have the ability to ask questions about your data. So if I wanted to ask the system information about revenue by client or something like that, I could. Um, this chart is showing me, again, these are for my clients because the data can be filtered uh, by an employee's email address. So I'm a PM in this demo system. These are the clients who I'm managing projects. And you can see that Tesla right now is my biggest project that I'm managing. I've got revenue versus budget comparison on one of my projects that was a critical one and I just pinned it to my dashboard. I've got information about my resources, how planned the utilization was. I've got information about actual and remaining work and a little bubble chart showing me about funding on those projects. So when I drill into one of these tiles, it takes me into the underlying report. So in this case, I'm gonna launch that report and the one that showed revenue by client also gives me details. The detailed report shows me revenue versus budget on each of those projects. And then in terms of the projects themselves, I'm seeing a monthly trend that shows me how much revenue we've generated, our different elements of cost. So labor cost, material cost, travel, burden, total cost, then what is the profit or loss on that project? Each of these, they call them tiles, are interactive. So if I wanted to see what projects a certain customer we were managing, once I select the customer, then the other tiles auto-update. So now it's showing me, it looks like Acoustic Kitty is the main project that we're working on for this client. I can see high-level information, but I can also drill into other details. So I can go to the individual tabs themselves, to see information about funding or the project status, burn down, et cetera. But I can also right click on a report. And what this does is it allows me to drill through other, other details on that project. So I can see details about the AR, specifically for 1002, time information, expense information, et cetera. So what I want to go through is I actually want to go to the status report. So the PSR in Power BI is like that next level of detail. So if you remember from our dashboard, this is one of the visualizations that I pinned. So if you have a report and you wanna put it on your dashboard because this project, maybe it's like it's critical because either um, the funding is running low or maybe we've got a big milestone coming up, I can pin it to one of my dashboards. So the idea would be I would just take, either pin it to an existing one or a new one, and that way every time I log in, that's part of my routine is to look at those key metrics or in this case, a key project. So when I drilled in, it's showing me revenue amounts versus budgeted, but now it's trended over time versus just the, the cumulative to date on that homepage. Now I'm seeing total funded value, um, backlog, revenue data. And now within the status window, if you remember earlier, we had like a single line for labor. But now my labor is broken out by labor category code. And my travel is in more detail. Uh, and then within my burdens, it's not just a single line for my burdens. I'm seeing 
how much fringe overhead GNA, um, both client and customer side on the overhead side. So it allows me to drill in to see that additional detail. And then I'm still seeing profit or loss, just like I did, but with more detail there. On the right hand side, this work breakdown structure or WBS, this is showing me the structure on that job. And if you remember from one of our other little snippets, we talked about I can set funding at any level of the WBS. But I can also see details of this report at any level. So if I want to see information about requirements, I'll just click on requirements. And now you can see that requirements was funded at 1.25 million. I can see details about backlog and revenue there. Plus the center section is now showing me just information related to requirements. So these dashboards, they're real time, right? And they also are what I would call interactive, right? So I can select a, a field and then the other sections auto update. So really a powerful way to drive information out to your PMs and executives so they can make better decisions about their projects. Um, so let me just go to one other view and then I'm gonna show you if you wanted to start from scratch, actually how you could build something. So let's go into our planned utilization and talk a little bit about what's available here. So within planned utilization, it's showing me uh, this grid and I can control how it's color coded, right? So you can decide if my utilization is under 75%, I wanna highlight it red so someone looks at it. Um, so you decide what percentage um, means it should be highlighted a red or a green color. Um, but this information comes from the planning side of Dynamics, uh, and we've got a little video on that we'd love for you to see of how you can build out your budgeting and look to see do we have an issue with utilization going forward. So my demo system, you can see I've got red all over. Um, hopefully, you're doing a better job of managing your projects. But you've seen overall capacity, what's been booked, that book percentage, and available hours of each of the resources uh, in your organization or within the group that you manage. If you wanted to build your own view and you've got access, so for administrators, they can control it where users just see reports, they can't edit them. But if I'm a power user and I can actually either edit an existing report or add a new one, I just hit my edit button. And now you can see that over on the right hand side, visualizations and new fields have popped up. At the bottom, I've got this little plus sign. It allows me to create a new page. In this case, it's like a blank canvas. I've always dreamed of being able to, to be artistic, which I never was, but uh, my art is numbers. So let me talk a little bit about how we could build a view and that whole process to do it. So let's start from our blank page. And then over on the right-hand side, I've got different fields of information that I might want to add to this report. So the first thing I'll do is, under my job, you see some of the measures related to a job. So everything from the city and the country where the work is being performed to the actual client themselves, right? So I could choose the client's name. But what I want to start with is the job description. So I'm just going to go ahead and click that box. And now over on the left-hand side on my canvas, it just is showing all the jobs in my demo system. Now as I scroll down, you'll see other measures. So job categories are types of expenses, the AR table, that's my accounts receivable, budget information, funding, the job cube ledger, this is all of your historical job transactions or the job sub ledger, the job timesheet, once time is processed through labor and posted, it hits my job ledger. But until then, it sits in the timesheet. So we can actually, and because all of the information is in the same database, I can have a report that shows time that's been processed, but also time that maybe hasn't been approved yet. So if you're trying to get better visibility, seeing that time before it's processed is critical. You know, but I've got my job list, and now what is it that I want to analyze about the job? So let's go down and find something interesting. I'm a revenue guy, so let's go ahead and, you know, I wish I got compensated based on revenue. Um, so let's just go ahead and grab revenue as a measure we want to analyze. So once I add, oops, go ahead and add 
instead of reported revenue, my actual um, revenue amount, I should say. So now it's showing me my projects with total revenue by project. So that's you know some nice information, but I want to do a few things with it. The first I want to do is I don't want to look at all the projects. So anything that we're not working on yet, I don't want to show it. So I'm going to show me show projects where revenue is greater than let's say a thousand dollars. So that easy to set a filter on my data set to limit it to just show certain particular projects. So this is revenue in total where the project has greater than $1,000 in revenue. So that's pretty neat, but people oftentimes, they don't want to see totals, they want to see trends. So I would switch from a table view, which is multiple rows in a single column of data to a matrix, which is multiple rows, in this case jobs, but also multiple columns where I can build that trend. So when I flip it to a matrix, now there's a new field that's visible. It says, what columns would you like to have? So what, how do you want to trend that data? My trend is going to be by periods, and I go to my date measure, and we have everything from seeing things by day, which you're not gonna to wanna to look at revenue by day probably, but maybe you wanna look at it by month or by quarter or by year. So let's just grab month as a measure and we'll drop it into our column section. And now what happens is magically, we now see our jobs revenue trended over the months and the added totals in here. So I'm seeing total for the month, but also a total for the project. That's pretty cool, but if you want to add a little bit of color to it, let's put some charts in here. So once I click into a blank part of the canvas, I can add a new view, or I could also just copy this section if I wanted and do a variation, maybe chart the data the way it is. But I want to see it a little bit different. What I want to see is, I want to see information about the customer. So it's great that we see the jobs, but what customers are we actually performing that work for? So let's go ahead and grab one of our customer measures. So it can either be the name or the number. Names make more sense to me. So let's grab our list of customers. Um, and what is it we wanna see about the customer? We're already seeing the revenue by project. Maybe I wanna get an idea of what does the backlog look like? Everybody these days is interested, what is our backlog? So if I just add my backlog as a measure, now you're seeing information about projects, and what is the backlog? If I wanted to turn it into some kind of chart, I would just choose the visualization. There's also additional visual, visualizations you can pull from. In this case, because I've got some work we're doing at risk, this Tesla work, we went past the funded amount, so you can do at risk work if needed. Let's add this as some type of um, either bar or line chart so we can see the fact that that Tesla project is not been funded. So we've got our projects with customers, our, our funding by customer and projects above. And just like before, when we showed that ability to select a cell and it updates the other elements. So again, if I pick a particular customer up above, I'm seeing the particular projects that we're performing work for that customer. So, just a little idea of not only some of the default views, but actually being able to tailor a view um, based on what you'd like to see. So the power in Power BI is that one, integrated back into Dynamics 365 Business Central. So you can see these views that you, can, you create, you can actually see them inside of Business Central. The data is automatically published, so we just define how often we want to publish data, so you're going to get near real-time data into your dashboards. We talked about creating an actual dashboard and pinning them, and then being able to create an ad hoc view on the fly. So Microsoft has become not only an innovator within the reporting and BI space, but really I'd say they are, if not the leader, one of the leaders, and we're getting all the advantages inside of Business Central on that investment inside of Power BI. Thanks for joining our Snack Time Snippet. Mark and I appreciate your time and uh, look forward to having you join us again soon. Have a great day.